Hey everybody, it's Yasmin Boland here and welcome to another week of Astrology with Yasmin. How are you going? Hope you're really well. Uh, my name is Yasmin Boland. I'm an astrologer, I'm a moonologer and I'm a best-selling Hay House author. And I'm coming to you live and direct on Facebook on my Yasmin Boland page. And I'm also coming to you live and direct on uh, unityonlineradio.org. So what we do on this show is we look at the astrology for the week ahead and uh, we also um, take calls, which is kind of exciting. It's kind of a big week this week because it's a new moon week, which is exciting as well. So we're going to look at the astrology for the week ahead. We're going to look at the new moon, what's special about that. Uh, and also we are going to be talking to my very special guest, Robin Mastro. Now, Robin is uh, someone I've kind of got to know a little bit over the internet uh, in the past few months, really during lockdown. Um, Robin, and Robin does all sorts of things, but what we're going to talk about is we're going to be talking about altars. She wrote a book called um, uh, Altars of Power and Grace. Isn't that an amazing title for... Uh, for a book, Altars of Power and Grace. And what she does is something I find amazing and fascinating because I love ritual. If you've been listening to me or watching me or reading me for any amount of time, you'll know I love ritual. I do new moon and full moon events every month. I'll give you the details because I'm doing some of those this month. And uh, so what Robin does is she actually um, helps us to harness the energies with altars based on the Indian uh, version of feng shui called Vastu, Vastu Shastra, which is something I'm also really interested in. I hope you're going to find really interesting as well. And uh, yeah, so I'll be getting Robin on in a minute. But before we do that, uh, and also I would love you to call in. Let me just give you the number as well, actually. If you want to call in, you can. Um, you have to be on the line for a bit, but that's okay if you're in the States anyway. Uh, the number to call from the States is 816-251-3555. That is 816 816- Two five one three triple five, and uh, if you're in um, England and you want to call in, it's going to be a bit expensive. But you would just dial zero one 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 eight one six two five one three triple five. You probably know how to dial the states. So I'd love to speak to you. I'd love to tell you what's going on in your chart. I'd love to talk to you about where the new moon will be taking place. But before we get to all that, let's talk about the new moon taking place this week. So for one thing, it's also known as a black moon uh, because it's the third new moon in the season of summer in the Northern Hemisphere and winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and uh, this season has four new moons instead of the usual three. Now, this only happens about every 33 months and I know people find it really interesting and in fact I even had a chat to the people from a TV show here in London called This Morning. Do you know that show This Morning? I think I'm going to be on it on Monday, on Wednesday morning if you're in the UK. Tune in around 11am. I think I'm going to be on, touch wood. We had a bit of a chat and we were talking about the new moon and the new moon in general and this new moon and the black moon. I had to kind of tell them, well, actually the black moon sounds kind of mysterious, but guess what? It doesn't really have any astrological significance. It's really more of an astronomical thing. It's kind of as well, I think, something that... Um, the farmers back in the olden days would be paying more attention to, especially in the States, actually. Um, so there you go. This, um, so yeah, I mean, it's a black moon. It's a black moon. So the question is, have you been keeping up your wishing practices through lockdown? You might already have everything you want in your life, in which case, yay you, lucky you. But we humans are actually here to manifest. We're here to consciously create. And uh, it may well be that there are things in your life you would like to create. And if that's the case, then this new moon is a really good one to tune into. The other thing is that um, this new moon is uh, really important from the point of view that it's in the sign of Leo. Now, um, when I started writing about this new moon 
a couple of years ago when I was writing my Moonology Diary for this year, um, you know, I never could have predicted, well, I probably could have, but I didn't. In fact, I probably couldn't have predicted. I don't think anyone predicted this, actually, <laughs> that we would have been coming out of, you know, five, six months of lockdown um, in various parts of the world, although some parts of the world are still in lockdown. But the new moon in Leo, for those of us in the northern hemisphere, where we just sort of coming out of lockdown, restrictions are being eased, at least for now, the kids are going back to school, you know, the new moon in Leo is going to be a really big deal because it's the Leo is the, the sign ruled by the sun. And as I'm saying that here in London, it's starting to rain. <laughs> but the sun is, you know, the bright giver of life. It gives all the energy that we need to live. Literally, without the sun, we'd all be dead. So Leo is a really important sign. It's a sign of showing off, showing the world what you've got, getting out there. And it's taking place this week. And I think it's really important for everybody who's been in lockdown to think as you're coming out of lockdown and of course i have to put um the lovely victorians out of this picture because all the all our friends in uh in um victoria in australia they're all still in lockdown poor things they all got put back into lockdown i think there's even police and army um, patrolling the streets which is kind of terrifying um but for those of us who've managed to get out of lockdown uh you know, this new moon is really important because it's about coming out of the dark. And, you know, in here in the Northern Hemisphere where I am, we've actually had, uh, we had lockdown, you know, it started in March at the end of winter. And, you know, it kind of has gone through summer, such as we have it here compared to other parts of the world. So it's not like it's been dark, literally, like in Australia, they've had lockdown in winter now. Um, but it's been a dark time for a lot of people, you know, whether it's because you've been separated from your loved ones. I've spoken to so many people who've got, you know, children and grandchildren they haven't, haven't been able to see or, you know, they've only been able to see them through, you know, glass, through a door, not, you know, a glass door and so on and so forth. It's been difficult and a lot of people have lost their jobs. There's been a lot of businesses that have gone out of, completely gone out of business. You know, so it has been a complete nightmare for a lot of people. And for other people, it's been okay. For us, it's been fine, you know. Thank God, touch wood, you know, we work for ourselves. We work from home anyway. And quite frankly, as a Cancerian, you know, I've had five months at home with my beloved husband and son and a full fridge. So as I keep saying, what more could I want? Plus, we'd happen to have rented um, a, a beautiful little wooden box of a chalet on the shores of Lake Geneva for this summer and we had it for the whole time um and you know it was great because it was quite remote so we were able to go there and not really be putting ourselves or anyone else in any danger of spread so you know it's been a mixed bag but if you've been having a difficult time in the past few months with lockdown this new moon is for you because it's in the sign of leo and leo is the sign of brightness and coming out of the shadows and really showing the world what you've got so what i would urge everybody to do is to think about how you want your post lockdown life to look how do you want it to look you know, what intentions are you going to set around your post lockdown life? And even if you're still in lockdown, if you're in if you're in Victoria or anywhere else that they're having lockdown, you can still do this. How do you want your post lockdown life to look? This is the time to set some intentions, okay? And then if you would like to join me on Wednesday, I will be doing a new moon ceremony uh, on my page on Facebook. Um, just look me up, Yasmin Boland on Facebook, if you don't already know me there. And, uh, or you can just go straight to my events page. I'll give you the address. It's moonmessages.com forward slash FB events for Facebook events. And I'll be doing a new moon ceremony. And we'll all come together and we'll make our wishes together. 
after the new moon because right now we're actually in the end of the waning cycle the end of the end of the end before we get to the new moon which is going to take place at 3 41 a.m uk time uh, on wednesday morning so when we do um, the wednesday afternoon new moon wishing we will have passed through the veil into the waxing cycle would be the perfect time to be making some wishes um, and also another thing which I actually wrote about in my Moonology diary, which I would show you <coughs> if I had a copy, but I haven't, I haven't found it since I've unpacked. I'm hoping I've brought it back from France with me. Um, but this new moon in India marks the festival of Ganesha Chaturthi. I think I'm saying that right. Ganesha Chaturthi, which celebrates the birth of the revered Hindu elephant god Ganesha. Okay. If you're not familiar with this amazing otherworldly being with an elephant's head, use the new moon to get acquainted. Google Ganesha and ask Ganesha for help whenever you need to overcome any obstacles or you're starting something new. And, you know, Ganesha is um, the God who helps us when we're at the start of a new cycle. And normally in August, it's sort of the last time you would think you're in the start of a new cycle, although Again, in the Northern Hemisphere, we do have, uh, in September, we have all the kids going back to school at this time every year, unlike in Australia, where they go back in January, which frankly makes a lot more sense to me. They start their new year in January. But here in the, U in the Northern Hemisphere, they do start their new year in, in September. So Ganesha is really good to appeal to if you have kids going back to school. But again, I would bring this back to what's happening for all of us, which is going back... Um, going back into real life after lockdown, okay? So more about this particular um, new moon in a minute, but I wanna bring on to the show, uh, actually the very first, my very first guest that I've ever had on this Unity radio show, <coughs> um, since I've been doing it for about three months, and her name is Robin Mastro. She's the co-founder of Vastu Creations, and of the American Institute of Vastu, uh, which is basically all about working with the energies. It's like if you've heard of Feng Shui, which is actually the daughter of Vastu. Vastu came first. So it's like Feng Shui, except it's the Indian version. And it particularly appeals to me because they actually use astrology and the planets and gods and goddesses and mantras and so on. So it's kind of amazing you might have seen if you're if you follow me on facebook you might have seen we had um robin's husband michael uh i i interviewed him once or twice um about vastu and it, people loved it so let's bring robin onto the show are you there robin hello and welcome Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. So, Robin, let's get right to it. You work a lot with altars, correct? Yes, I do. And what's, the, what's yeah. like, one thing we do a lot of in my life, in my world, is we do a lot of intention setting. And I know a bit about what you do with altars because we made a little altar in my house um, just before we went on holidays, actually. And we'll get to how you do it in a minute. But I know one thing that you got me to do was you got me to write down my number one intention and to put it in the middle of the altar. So what are altars for? Are they just for intention setting? Are they just for devotion? What are they for? And then we'll talk about how to make one for the new moon. Um, altars have been a part of many traditions around the world since the beginning of time. Um, even before recorded time. And I, I, in fact, how I found out about altars was in this incredible dream that I had, and I found myself observing a ceremony that seemed to be Celtic in nature um, out in the forest underneath the full moon, and people would honor the divine by bringing those things that were most important for their survival and their upliftment, and they would place it on the altar to energize um, those items for the next moon cycle. And um, I, I was a young mother, um, had recently lost everything, and had just moved into a, a little uh, home, uh, and, I, and I was so grateful that I had a place for 
my um, my little family to grow. And I started creating these moon altars, and my entire life changed. And I eventually went back to school and got a master's focused on how to make these altars accessible to um, a Western culture. And my research showed that people's lives kept transforming. So they're basically homing devices for your highest intentions to come into form. Sorry, I missed that. They're basically what devices? Homing devices. Homing devices, right. Of the divine into physical reality. It's like you, you place your order and the divine is like the short order truck. It, it supplies you with everything you need. And what I love about the altars is that it may be better than what you anticipate. If you're open to the magic that the altars bring, your life can can change for the better. So it, it's trusting the divine. It's surrendering your beliefs and your and your hopes and dreams of the things that you want and opening up to what the divine has in store for you. Right. So... Um... Gosh, as I always say to you when I talk to you and your husband, Robin, I've got so many questions, I barely know where to start. Let's start by a question I think that comes to my mind and probably to a lot of people's minds is, you know, how many altars should you have in your house? Should you have one? Should you have five? Should you have one in every sector of your house? Is it okay to just put them where they feel good? Let, let's start with that before we get down to the nitty gritty of how to make an altar. Well, I wrote about um, these altars in my first book, Altars of Power and Grace, and there are eight directional altars within an environment, plus a form of an altar. What I suggest to my clients and um, to your listeners is to never have more than two regular working altars in your home at a time. And the reason is, when you ignite an altar and you place your intention in the offering tray in the center of the altar and you bring the energy of the divine into your life to support you using this altar, things start happening. If you place eight altars around your house, it would be so much energy and so much change that you wouldn't know which altars are working the best for you. So I say two at a time. Okay, yeah. two at a time. Now, the un yeah, go on. An altar. So that altar is put together as the moon begins to become full, and it's taken down as the moon starts waning. Okay, okay. So now we've got two altars at once, max, plus the full moon altar when the, when the full moon comes. So now, I, when I did my altar with you, which we did together, which I've got a video of, which I haven't um, edited yet, but I will do, um, I put that uh, in the chimney breast of my living room just because it was just waiting for an altar. It's like we've painted the walls and we painted the chimney breast white and it was just this space that I always had intention to turn into a devotional space and I think you ended up telling me it was about Venus which is great because it's love and abundance but can you just put one anywhere or if you're only going to do two or one or two can you just do it in the best place or does it have to be oh well I want to work on my career so it has to go in my career corner or I want to work on you know love so it has to go in my love corner how does it work? different than feng shui in that it is a directional architectural science and it is based on the electromagnetics and uh, the, 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 the way the sun moves across the sky and the different energy that comes from that illumination. So each quad, each area of the house has a very specific aspiration attached to it. And so it's, uh, I think we placed that altar in the, what, what direction was that, Mike? In the east. In the, in, for her altar? Oh, um, I'll look. Um, I think, oh, Venus. Yeah, it's Venus. Yeah, south. South, the southeast? Yeah, absolutely. So it is a transformation altar. The energy of the south 
southeast is very hot, and it illuminates that which needs to be surrendered to the divine. So it's a great altar to put in the southeast when there is um, a lot that you're dealing with that seems uh, uh, like you need the support from from the divine. So that's why we use which that. which is everything, isn't it? We need support from the divine for everything, basically. Well, it, you know, especially during COVID, I would say we all feel a little out of control. So this is the best placement for an altar when we feel overwhelmed by our circumstances. So we have basically no way that we can figure a way out of this. And that we need to offer it up to the divine to support us. And so... I say to people, and this was pre-COVID, because who knew what we were going to get into uh, when 2020 began, but if you have a divorce or an illness or a child is acting up and it seems more than you can manage, or if you have uh, issues that are going on in your life that you just cannot figure out at all, a transformation altar in the Southeast is a great place to build an altar. And because Bakhtu is a little bit different than Feng Shui, items on the altar are directionally placed. The elements, the five elements, earth, air, water, fire, and space, are, are placed specifically to, to actually activate all of the energies from the five elements that come together to support you. And you place your dreams and desires in the center of the altar, and then you step away and you surrender it. It's thy will be done, and you allow the divine to manifest for you what it is that is in the highest desire of your soul, of, of your spirit. And so you basically, in your small mind, have an idea of what it is you want, but there is something else there, some magic that you, you can't put your finger on it because you need the help of some, some divine force to support you. Cool, okay. So could we say then, for anyone listening, the southeast is quite a good place, you know, a generic place. If you, if you've got, if you can put something in the southeast, it's a good place for just about anything that you want to surrender to the divine, anything you're having trouble with that you need to surrender. Now, um, because right now everybody is, everybody's being affected by this. We, we don't have control over it. So this is a perfect place to create an altar to support ourselves during this time of COVID. Now, if you were creating a connection to the divine on a spiritual level and you wanted a place to meditate and uh, the energy and, and to connect with the divine in a deeper way. The energy of the Northeast is really good for a meditation room and really good to place an altar to meditate in front of to either do your meditation or chanting or your yoga or your journaling. The, the, the Northeast is the optimum energy. It is the confluence of the magnetic and solar energy. The magnetic energy, which is abundance, comes from the North. The solar energy, with the, which is our health and our upliftment, comes from the East. And when they come together, that confluence of energy is the most powerful place to place an altar to meditate. So now, Robin, just say someone's living in a shared house and they've just got a bedroom, do they go into the northeast corner of their bedroom or, or can they just face northeast? How does it work? They can place an altar in the northeast corner of the bedroom and altars don't have to be ginormous. They don't have to be huge. They can be as, as small as the CD. Remember the old CD um, players that size? Yep. You could have put a nice little table, or I've, I've built altars that were as big as an outside, or in a, in a, on a stage, or an entire room can be an altar. It just depends. If you have a bedroom in the Northeast, you could create your whole room as an altar, or you could create a small altar specifically placed in the Northeast. Now, I've created 
needed altars as small as on a windowsill. You just need small items there. And the altar, it's not so much the size, it's the intention, which you speak about so beautifully, Yasmin. It's the intention behind the altar that creates the magic. And it's also creating something that when you look at it, you you it touches your heart and you see it as beautiful because the beauty beauty is the highest vibration that we, that connects us to the divine when you see something that is beautiful and it touches your heart it feeds that altar so every item on that altar should bring you joy it should make your heart sing it should make you look at that altar and see it as if it is Okay, Robin, sorry, we're going to go to a break. Could you hang on and we'll come back to you in a minute? Yes, good luck, Oh, Robin, sorry. Sorry to cut you off there, Robin. Um, That's good. It's all right. I don't know your... I don't know this. Yeah, no, I, I should have told you. Um, it's interesting what you're saying about Lakshmi, though, because, about, about beauty, because beauty is Lakshmi and, you know, how revered she is in India. It's interesting you're saying beauty is the highest vibration because in so many ways Lakshmi is such, you know, one of the highest vibrations and she, she epitomizes beauty. And I know in India, you know, you're encouraged to make yourself up and adorn yourself with flowers and oils and makeup and bindis and all that to honor Lakshmi. So it's so interesting talking about that. Um, so we've got about um, three minutes now of break. So are you okay to hang on? And what, I'm, what I thought I might do is when we get back is we might take a couple of calls and then maybe we can see what altars they would benefit from. Okay, sounds good. Okay, and maybe we'll talk about how to, how to use an altar for the new moon to set our intentions. That sounds good too. Okay, great. All right. So I'm going to end the Facebook Live um, and I'm going to ask everybody who's on Facebook Live, if you want to hear the rest of the show, hop over to www.unityonlineradio.org. Unityonlineradio.org. Lots of love. 